Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for uh, thank you for coming out. This is the um, you know guerrilla tactics for for building scalable e-commerce services with uh, Apache Cassandra, Apache Pulsar, and uh, Vector Search, of course. Um, I actually have a uh, an image up there for Langchain. Uh, at, uh, at DataSacks lately, I've been doing a lot of work with, with Langchain in terms of um, you know, using it to uh, you know, abstract a lot of the things that are around working with LLMs and uh, you know, getting to, to generate embeddings. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, too. Um, yeah, so just a real quick uh, poll of the room here. Um, is, is there anyone who's, um, who's like kind of new to Cassandra? Oh, yeah, a couple. Okay, okay. All right, how about vector search? Anybody who is really new to that? Okay, yeah, a lot of the room. Okay, all right, all right. Good, now I know what I can't skip. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, real quick about me. Um, I'm a developer advocate with uh, DataStax. I've done um, uh, a few books, uh, two on distributed databases, and I have one on Java uh, 21 that's coming out uh, hopefully by the end of the month. Um, in terms of uh, you know my experience with e-commerce, I spent a lot of time working at uh, WW Granger. Uh, actually, that was my, my first interaction with Cassandra back in 2012, and then um, I spent about six years as the uh, engineering lead for the NoSQL team at Target, and uh, that's where that's where this this whole talk kind of came from an, a, a workshop idea that that we had of uh, of building on a lot of the use cases and things that I supported while I was at Target to. Um, you know, kind of show the way for other folks trying to do the same thing. All right. So the tech stack that uh, we're going to work on today, or look at today, I should say, is um, you know using Spring Boot, Spring Data um, for the uh, you know like the the controller layer and the uh, the data layer, um, and then um, a Node.js React uh, you know simple layer on top using Tailwind CSS. Um, I know Tailwind CSS gets a little bit of hate on uh, on Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it these days, but um, you know, as a as a backend engineer, I kind of like Tailwind CSS. So I don't have to think about how things look, and it's just you know, kind of takes kind of does a lot of that for you. One thing in particular that we're going to focus on um, or dig into a little more deeply here in terms of um, you know, driving at um, you know, product recommendations using vector search generative AI is the um, is this service layer in particular. Um, now, to, now to go ahead and integrate this with a, a large language model, there's there's a couple of extra steps here. Um, one, um, because of the state of the um, of current AI tooling, where they, they kind of focus on you know JavaScript and they focus on Python. Um, the, the support for a lot of those a lot of those things a lot of those frameworks with Java just isn't there so I had to ha actually branch out and do this one in, in Python just to get the data loaded for the um, for the vector search backend um, and I do that by um, you know working with a model that's uh, that's from the hugging face hugging face um, you know libraries we use that to generate the embeddings um, returns them and persists them in Cassandra of course um, and then, of course, when we uh, we have our service layer, you know, go ahead and run a query. So it'll it'll take like a, a product and grab that product's vector, and then run an ANN, approximate nearest neighbor, based on that vector. Um, that's going to actually do a vector search in Cassandra, return the results, and then and then we display it. It's simple, simple. Um, we'll actually get get more into that and and see what that looks like on the uh, the CQL side, um, as well as a little bit of the code as well. All right, so the reason that we're, we're still talking about um, you know, building good data models for, for e-commerce in 2023 is because nobody wants to see this. Um, you know, where you go to a site and you know, you're waiting a little bit and then, then maybe, uh-oh, ah, there we go. Helps if you turn it on. Then maybe that shows up, then you wait a little more and maybe that and that. And then it's like, you know, internet in 1996. It's, you know, everything else kind of, oh, kind of comes in. So. <laughs> we want to make sure that nobody goes through this, which is why we still talk about building good data models and making sure that things run well. Um, of course, the, uh, the magic behind all this is uh, Apache Cassandra. Um, it's been around for quite a while, um, engineered for high levels of read and write performance. It's uh, linearly scalable, you know, so that means if you, once you have a, um, maybe you establish that you can get 10,000 reads a second at uh, a six-node cluster, 
Well, if you need to reach 20,000 reads a second, then you know you need to double that cluster to, to go ahead and match. That's linearly scalable. Um, highly available, so it can withstand um, you know, minor outages, which is really good. Uh, platform agnostic, too. And of course, my, my favorite feature of Cassandra has always been the geographic distribution and awareness. Um, you know, being able to have like an East Coast data center, a West Coast data center, a Central Europe data center, and you know, write once and it'll replicate everywhere. I've always thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, you know, we also have DataSax, AstroDB, Cassandra Database as a service, deploys to all three major clouds. Um, and our free tier is actually really generous. You get about 80 gigs of storage. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't, to, to go ahead and check out, check out Aster. It's uh, pretty slick, pretty lightweight, pretty easy. Um, and you don't have to worry about running Cassandra on your own if that's, you know, if, if being a DBA and an, an infra person isn't your, isn't your thing. <laughs> All right. So Spring Data Cassandra, um, I did mention, is the, the data layer for this project. Over the years, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with Spring Data Cassandra. Um, the love part is that it really does make things easy. Um, configuration's easy with the application YAML or application properties, you know, if you you know, you prefer the, uh, the properties way. Um, and it reduces just a lot of boilerplate code in terms of, you know, connecting and getting useful CRUD operations by default. I mean, there's just so much you don't have to build just to basically use your database when you use Spring Data Cassandra. Um, now, the hate part of it, of course, comes from using things that don't run well in Cassandra and still having those available. Um, and oh, and I, I made the slide. I couldn't decide on... I was down to like two Return of the Jedi memes, and in the end, I decided to use them both um, because it is a trap. And uh, if you're running in Kubernetes, many containers will die to bring you this information if you're you know, doing a find all or a count or something like that. But uh, basically, spring data, especially with Cassandra, you should be leery of any method that says all or count. Um, just going to throw that out there. All right, so Apache Pulsar. Uh, Lorena, here you go. This is for you. <laughs> um, Hey, this gives you, um, you know, publish, subscribe, uh, message queue, event streaming, kind of all in one. Um, the cool thing about Pulsar is that it's geographically aware, like Cassandra is. So it kind of makes it a natural fit to use with Cassandra. Also highly scalable. Um, you know, I, I didn't work on the Kafka team at Target, but I can tell you that, that I do know we had all kinds of issues in terms of going multi-data center with Kafka. Um, and a lot of those headaches, Pulsar just kind of takes care of. Um, so highly recommend it if you haven't checked that out. All right, and of course, Vector Search. Um, Vector Search is new with Cassandra as of uh, 5.0. Um, essentially, you know, if you, you haven't used it a lot, it works on data that's been transformed or tokenized um, into embeddings. And um, it allows you to do approximate matches or, or searches on that data inside of, um, you know, like, vector space, and you can do that with um, a few different algorithms. So, you know, you have things that are like cosine based. Um, dot product is a, a little bit faster version of, of cosine if, you're, if all your vectors are normalized properly. Um, and then, of course, there, there's Euclidean in terms of getting Euclidean distance between vectors as well. Um, one thing I found out the hard way while trying to help someone on, on Stack Overflow is that if you have a vector that is all zeros in vector space. Um, Euclidean is the only one you can use because all the cosine-based ones will throw a divide by zero error, which, you know, well, nobody wants. So there's a small little tip for you. Um, as far as, like, vector search in general, you know, kind of how does it work where, you know, you, you think once we have, once we have certain um, strings, in, in this case, the names of products. So let's, this is an example for, like, a, uh, a pet supply uh, website, you know, where we, we have like love my dog ring chew toy and love my dog tennis ball toy. Um, and we can do, and this example is using the, uh, the cosine based index, we can do an approximate nearest neighbor based on one of those vectors and it'll have an understanding of how close it is approximately um, to the other. So that's kind of sort of how it works. Um, I always like to show new, new people the, um, like this slide because Getting, wrapping your head around it in two-dimensional space is, is a little easier than trying to wrap your head around it in 1,536-dimensional space. So, you know, that's always, a, uh, that's always a good start. All right, so when we're talking e-commerce, you know, it's kind of a general term. 
Um, e-commerce subsystems, however, there, there's a lot that goes into building you know, a good e-commerce site. There are things you need, there are things that are kind of cool, and there are things that are, that are nice to have. Um, the, uh, the things you absolutely need are you know, like a shopping cart, you need a product system, um, a way to manage your users so they can log in, a way to process orders. Um, and then I have the recommendation system up there. The recommendation system, you know, it's not necessary, but, it, but it's, it's, the, it's the perfect, I think, <laughs> perfect use case of, of kind of demonstrating how we can use vector search in something like, um, something like, uh, like e-commerce. So, all right. So, you know, a lot of this in terms of use cases is going to be pretty self-explanatory. You know, like our product catalog is, hey, we can kind of navigate through different categories. We can go to our product page. Um, we can get pricing, and sometimes pricing, you know, will be a little different depending on if it's a web price or if it's a price in, you know, uh, San Francisco versus a price in, like, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. You know, they're going to be different in terms of uh, just kind of how things, how things are, are priced and uh, the expenses that go along with that. Um, shopping cart, of course, you're going to need one. Um, the idea is, is that um, in this case, we have data on user carts. And I say that plural because um, when, you, when, you ha when you allow users to have multiple carts, that's kind of the first step in having like a, like a wish list kind of a functionality. Um, and then, of course, you, know, you want to be able to track products inside of uh, carts as well. And then finally, recommendations. The, um, the recommendation uh, service that I've kind of built out here that I'll, I'll show you is that... Um, you know, when you're on the product page and you, you kind of pick your size, in this case, it's, a, it's an extra large uh, track jacket, um, and you say add to cart, that's when it kicks off the product recommendation service and says, hey, you might also like this Datastax black hoodie. Um, yeah, by the way, Lorena, I, I took all these pictures myself. If you look closely, you can see there's dog hair on, well, the, <laughs> the hoodie specifically. But <laughs> All right. Um, and then, of course, user profile. Um, you want a way for users to log in. In this case, I, I've built in um, a Google single sign-on. Um, so, so yeah, so that's an easy way that you can kind of go and you know have have just say, hey, click use Google. Um, you can also do like like GitHub, um, you know, and I, I think Facebook as well. Although that might be falling a little out of popularity, but uh, yeah, definitely can be done. The uh, the actual data model or ER model, if you if you will, kind of looks like this, where you know we when, when we want to view our, our subsystems, this is, this is what we're looking at from how we build our data model, how we're going to support things out, you know, where we, we have our users who, who have things like addresses and shopping carts, and, you know, those carts can contain products, and products can recommend each other, and orders also contain products. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a complex relationship. I see people snapping pictures, so I'll wait... Hey, all right. <laughs> um, so, of course, if you, if you haven't done a lot of uh, Cassandra data modeling, the thing you need to think about the most is which queries are you going to support? Um, so you, you kind of have to have this little discussion, you know, with your team about, um, well, what is what for our shopping cart, what does it need to do? You know, and, and in this case, well, a user needs to be able to view all the products in their cart, and they also need to be able to, like, add and remove products from the cart as well. Um, so all of that kind of figures into, you know, how you're going to build your table and more specifically, how you're going to build your uh, primary key. Um, in this case, this is how, for this product project, I should say, this is how we solve the, uh, the cart query, um, where we have like just a, a UUID as the partition key. Um, we have a, a product timestamp next. Um, and, and the idea with that is this way, um, we'll, we'll see the, the products in the cart in order as they're, as they're added, and it'll, it'll maintain that order. Um, and then if by some strange coincidence you get two products added at the, the exact same time, which you shouldn't, but just in case, we have product ID there as a, as a tiebreaker just to uh, you know, kind of make sure we're separating those out. Um, and I also have a TTL on here. Um, this one was a, was a bit of a lesson learned. But when you don't have a TTL on your shopping cart, what happens is they become avenues of attack by um, like other malicious operators. Um, the, the general theory that, um, 
that, that we had at Target at the time was that somebody was using an old cart to like scrape prices. Um, so, so suddenly what we'd see is a, is a big spike in write activity um, on, on one particular table in the, in the cart model. And um, all of a sudden this cart would have like 1,500 products in it at, in just a few seconds. And of course we know that that's not human activity. You know, that's, that's a bot that, that's gone through and has some of our you know, API URIs and is, is able to inject some things there. So highly recommend in this case a TTL on the carts. In this case, um, I have it set to 60 days. 60 days seems long enough that, you know, if you have a shopping cart out there and you haven't looked at it in two months, eh, I, I mean, you're probably not terribly interested in it. So it, it seems like a safe enough number, but that's gonna be something that, you know, will be more of a, more of a business decision than, uh, than anything, like a hard and fast rule, so. All right, so product recommendations. Um, in this case, we, we're building a special table just to kind of handle the vectors for the products. Um, it's still just keyed by, by product ID. The, uh, the main thing here is that our vector type is using a, um, a 384 dimensional float. Now, your dimensions that you'll use you know, for, your, for your vector are gonna differ with um, each use, use case, but more specifically on whichever, whichever um, large language model you're using to uh, generate your embeddings with. Um, and then of course, uh, what, what really makes this work is the, um, the storage attached index that is also on the, on the vector column as well. Um, getting into specifics about the, the model for this, um, we're using one of Hugging Face's models known as um, you know, the All Mini LM L6 V2. Excuse me, it's technically a, a sentence transformer, which you know, basically means that it takes like phrases and it, you know, can tokenize those into um, you know, like an array of floats. It works with 384 dimensions. The reason that I chose this particular model is that we're just going on, on product name here. So it's, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot of moving parts to that. Um, but the thing is, is that the more dimensions you have, like if you're using um, OpenAI's um, ADA 02 model, that's 1,536 dimensions. The more dimensions you have, the more accurate, you know, a lot of your, a lot of your results will be. But that, there's that, there's that, um, trade-off there where your queries will also be a little bit longer as well. Um, so 384, I felt like was a nice balance of performance versus accuracy to um, kind of drive the best results there. Um, and actually, uh, we've, we've gone through, or I've gone through in this and um, wrote the interface with, uh, with Langchain to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, the code will be up there in a second, but um, Langchain, if you haven't heard of it, it's a framework for building applications with large language models. And you know, I've said this before a couple of times that it abstracts a lot of the more difficult aspects of working with LLMs away so you don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, Langchain specifically works with, um, you know, has like API access to, out to um, you know, Hugging Face and, and OpenAI. Um, and I, I don't know if it works with Cohere or not, but um, you know, I was able to do a little bit with, um, with Cohere for the, um, <laughs> the Taylor Swift GPT model that, uh, that just went out. So the Python loader, I, I apologize for the, uh, the font size here, but I, I did try and get it as, a, as big as I could. But simply put, I just had, an, uh, I had a file of product IDs and um, up here is where I specified the, uh, specified the model. And really, we just rip through the, uh, the product IDs read them out, um, make a call to uh, Cassandra to get the product back by ID. Um, and then we take the product name from that and we use this model.embed query. That's what generates our embedding right there. Um, and with this generated and you know, below, you can see we're doing our session execute and it's, it's inserting those uh, product vectors into the table. Oh, too fast. <laughs> Um, that produces data that kind of looks like this. Um, so, so in this case, um, I have a, I have a T-shirt on the website that says "Go away, or I'll replace you with a Spring Boot annotation." Um, when I use the vector for one of those and run a um, approximate nearest neighbor, um, you can see that I'm getting all of those all the different sizes of that shirt back. 
Um, and then I get you know, a couple other different ones on the bottom. That's important to remember for later, because in this particular example, um, you know, when, when I have like a large or an extra large of a shirt, um, you know, and I get a recommended product that's the small of the same shirt I already added, you know, a small's not gonna fit me. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's not terribly useful. So the idea is, is that we kind of have to look at, you know, what we're getting for our, our next level of um, our next level of matching. Um, as far as building out to um, with, with Spring Data Cassandra, um, this is um, you know working out of the um, you know product vector repository. Um, I was able to use you know if you use the, um, the query annotation, you can you can go ahead and build out custom queries. Um, as far as Spring Data Cassandra goes, it doesn't quite have a native vector search in yet. So to get this to work, you do have to do a, a custom query for now. Um, so that's, that's what I've done here. Um, and like I said, I did a limit of eight because I want to make sure that I'm getting more products than, um, than just the ones that are the, a different size of the same shirt. So we actually call this um, in this find products by vector here. This is the um, get promotion product or get recommendation product service. Um, we go through and create um, a list of product vector POJOs from our product vector entities. You know, if you've used spring data enough, I'm, I'm sure you've done the, the entity to POJO conversion before. Um, and then down here, we again go through the list that we have. And as long as, and, and I'm oh, sorry, I should say, once we get to one that has a different product grouped, product group than the one that we searched on, we know we have a different product, and then that's the one that we return. So that's, that's kind of how the whole um, you know, product recommendation service uh, works with, with vector search on this. Um, so hey, getting a Pulsar. Um, I'm not going to get too much into Pulsar today, but I, I will talk about kind of how it's used in this pro project. Is, um, you know, I, I did talk about how it's um, you know, message ordering, uh, guaranteed delivery, good scalability. The idea is that this is what's going to move our order, once we place it, around to the different business units. So when you place your order, you have all your products in your cart, you know, that gets sent um, out to um, the pending orders topic. And the idea there is that um, you know, somebody on a forklift or a robot in a warehouse you know, comes back to, um, you know, or, or gets a message sent to it with a list of products to go pick. And it turns around and it takes that list and goes down the different aisles of the warehouse, gets the products, brings them back, and then that order goes from pending to, to picked. So it goes from like you know one topic to the other. Well, then it, it's in the shipping department. Shipping people have the, the picked order and they take it and package it up, put it in boxes, slap a label on it, send it on the conveyor belt, and they can mark it as shipped. Simple enough like that. Um, eventually that package, you know, goes on a truck, maybe it goes on a plane somewhere along the way, then back to another truck, and it ends up on your doorstep. You know, the driver gets out and snaps a picture of it, and um, that marks it as complete. So Pulsar is the way that we're kind of moving that, those orders around so that we know where they are um, throughout the different business units. Um, again, just kind of a way to, you know, kind of keep track of um, where a particular order is once it's been sent through. All right, so I've talked for an awful lot um, now I can show you how this all works. Essentially, um, I'm going to have this on a resource slide later, but this is the Git repo that has all of the code here. <laughs> uh, but basically, we're going to fire this up in uh, Spring Boot. I have six minutes, which should be plenty of time. Uh, I'm going to sign in with single sign-on with Google. I'm going to navigate to a product, add it to my cart, and that should trigger a, um, a product recommendation using vector search. So let's give this a shot here. Um, here we go. Yeah, I know, I'm one of those people who still uses Eclipse. And you know what? I'm not apologizing for that. <laughs> I, I know everyone likes VS Code, but... Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. I was just going to say, I've been using Eclipse for, oh, like 16 years, and I have just... Yeah, it's, it's just, yep, what I do. <laughs> All right, so uh, our Spring Boot project is running. So I can say HTTP, oh, slash, slash, localhost 8080. Hey, there we go. All right, so we have our site. Um, 
I can go to login and I'll select my Google account. There we go. I can check my profile. If I did everything right, oh, it knows who I am. Outstanding. There we go. That's, that's good. All right. So if I go back to the main area, come on. Um, I can go to my Apache Cassandra 3.0 contributor t-shirt and I'll go into that. And uh, I'm an extra large, so I'll say that. And once I add this to the cart, again, if, if everything's working properly, it should recommend a, um, another t-shirt, although I, I can't remember which one. So if I say add to cart, oh, there we go. That's the go away or I'll replace you with a, a Spring Boot annotation shirt. So that's, uh, again, that's, that's running vector search under the hood there. So, so there we go. Yeah, oh, and I can also look at the, uh, oh, dismiss. <laughs> Have a look at the shopping cart. Um, oh yeah, I, I tested earlier on the, um, the Datastax black hoodie. So of course you can see that my cart is persisting, which is excellent. <laughs> All right. And if I make my way back to the slides here. All right, um, like I said, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd have the um, GitHub repo up there along with some others. Um, this um, ecom product embedding loader, that's the Python script that I, I wrote that actually like kind of uh, works with the hugging face. Um, what is it, all mini L6 LLM. Um, here's a YouTube channel for data stacks developers. If you haven't been out there, we have all kinds of tutorials and instructional videos. There's a lot of great material out there, um, especially if you're new to um, like Gen AI and vector search and you wanna learn how to get started on this. Um, I actually, just not too long ago, put out a video on um, getting started with lane chain. So it really does walk you through, you know, a little bit of that as well. Um, and then, of course, you know, the Cassandra.apache.org main Cassandra site. Um, lots of great things out there, including all the documentation. Thank you, Lorena. <laughs> I know you're, you're right in front, too, and I'm, I'm picking on you all day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and hey, otherwise, um, highly recommend check out uh, AstroDB. You know, like I said, we have a, we have a great free tier and Unlike a lot of places, we don't require payment information. So if you just want to use it, you, you absolutely can and, uh, and try some things out. Um, I highly recommend that. So um, are there any questions? All right, well, hey, thank you all very much. I know this is one of the last talks of the day, so thank you so much for, uh, for, for coming out. Absolutely appreciate it.